for Sam Does That, uh, just checking in again with part two of the awesome checklist tutorial that we were working on last uh, last time. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, it's going to look good. So I'm going to jump right in. Uh, I've literally uh, picked up from where we left off. So if you haven't seen the first video, I'll put a link below for you guys to follow through and actually go check out. Uh, but yeah, we're going to pick up straight up from there. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to define some colours. So I'm going to go ahead and define colours. And the way that I'm actually going to do that is by uh, creating some lets. So I'm going to create some constants and I'm going to uh, create a UI, co uh, UI colour. This one's going to be called light orange. And it's going to be UI colour. And it's going to be UI colour. And the way that we create them, is, uh, the way that we create a UI color is by opening brackets, and you'll notice immediately that it's the same old Objective C syntax: red, green, blue, and alpha. So I've actually got these numbers all set up. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and plug these straight in. So 996, 0.467. Uh, so there we have it. So that's uh, so those are our colors that we're going to be referencing for the rest of the app. So what my intentions are at the moment, if I boot up the app, um, what we've got at the moment is we've got a pretty ugly looking app. If I do say so myself, we've got a hideous uh, big text field at the top. Uh, we've got a horrible white table view at the bottom and some not very interesting cells. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm actually going to set the background color to a uh, very dark, uh, to the dark orange, the text to a medium and the uh, text box to a light orange. So let's go ahead and do that just by simply going to uh, finding the colors. So the, here's the text field. So I'm just going to go ahead and change red color to that light orange that we just defined earlier on. Notice that we don't have to actually uh, declare self dot light orange. Uh, Swift automatically just sees it as an instant constant and allows you to use that. Um, so now that we've set that up, let's go ahead and set our uh, background for our table view to the med orange and let's set the actual cells. So my new cell right down here, my new cell dot background color equals, let's set that to the, did we say the medium orange or the dark orange? We said the medium orange. Uh, we've already actually defined that one, so let's set this one to the dark orange. And then let's give that a run, see how that looks. So that's looking uh, pretty, oh, it's not looking much better, I won't lie. It's still pretty hideous. <laughs> um, but at least, the, at least they're all kind of defined in different areas now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually change the tint color or the text color of this, of this text. So I'm just going to go my new cell dot text color equals, and we're just going to go ahead and create a white color, UI color, and now we have some uh, white text. So yeah, looking pretty uh, pr looking pretty garish, um, but I think our main problem here are these separator lines. These are, these are not pretty at all, and the way that we actually get rid of those is by going into our table view, and I believe there is a function in here. Again, if we search through, uh, there is a separator insert. Uh, there's one there and separate the style. So what we need to do is we need to actually take a step back, go to find our table view, which is right here, and then what we can do is we can go self dot table view dot separator, and now we have separator style, and we don't really want separator, so we're just going to set that to equals UI table view cell separator style dot none, and now let's give that a run again. And now we have a, a better looking app. I mean, it's orange, but it'll do. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's looking a little bit better now. Uh, we can actually enter some text in the top and our uh, items still get logged in underneath. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to draw your attention down to this line here, which is the uh, init, <coughs> the init, sorry, excuse me, the init statement for the uh, table view cell um, function right down here. And that's a DQ reusable cell with identifier. Now, what you would usually do is if you were setting up a new cell, as you would go uh, var my other cell, UI table view cell, and if and then at this point you could actually dictate. Uh, so if I go UI table view cell, you could actually dictate here in the init statement what style you want. Now we want to actually pick up a certain style. We want the style to not be. Uh, plain or standard, we want it to have the subtitle so that we can actually append the date 
of the time that we completed our task underneath in that in that subtitle. So I'm just going to delete that. The way that we uh, the way that we actually get around this because obviously we can't override that or you know reinitiate it without having to do exactly that and override the details for the DQ reusable self identifier. The way that we get around that is actually by creating a new kind of cell. What we're going to do is we're actually going to create a new subclass of the UI table view cell uh, class. And we're going to go to Miles and Checklist. I'm going to click on New File. And again, a Cocoa Touch class. And it's going to be, let's call it My Table View Cell. Um, and make sure it's a subclass of UI Table View Cell. Uh, and then I'm just want, going to want to create that. So this is our initiate function right here. And as you can see, the style is defined as uh, the value that's actually passed through when we init. However, we know that we want this style to be of subtitles. So what we can do is we can get rid of this initialization code comment and we can actually say style UI table view cell style dot subtitle. So now that we've done that, we've actually overridden the table view cell style to instead of uh, taking the argument that would usually be passed into it on the initiate function uh, to literally just override it forget about that for, um, argument and actually just take in the UI table view cell style subtitle instead so now when we go to our view controller all we have to do now is actually replace the instances of our UI table view cell which is just a standard run the mill table view cell with our new my table view cell so I'm just gonna go ahead and start here so here's the first instance I can find of it so you are table view cell we're just gonna overwrite that with my table view cell and as you can see it auto completes and it's represented as an object in uh, Xcode so we know we're doing something right so let's keep on going down. Let's try and find some more instances of UI table view cell. So there's a couple more here. So let's just go ahead and write my table view cell, my table view cell, my table view cell. Now, I've just realized that I've I have the resulting value here as a, as my table view cell. Now we can't actually edit that. Uh, because otherwise it, the data source does not see the original method that we uh, that it's asking for or rather the initial function that it's asking for it sees a different version of it so we need to make sure that that does remain as UI table view cell and because my table view cell is a subclass of um, UI table view cell we're not going to have any problems there or there'll be no conflicts uh, so I've just quickly replaced all of those in the page I'm pretty confident now if we actually run it we should see, yeah, not a great deal different. Um, so now, if I just do a quick test and go my new cell dot detail text label dot text equals test text, and give that a quick run. Now we have test text, which means it is working as we want it to be. Uh, so it would actually be cleaner to define these properties like the background color and the text color in the uh, table view cell class rather than just doing it straight into the view controller which is a bit messy so let's go ahead and take the uh, the things which aren't required here so we're going to take text color the background color and selection style and let's just copy well I'm just going to cut all two of those out pop over to my app de uh, sorry over to my table view cell and I'm just going to go over here, paste this in, and I'm going to go back to my view controller and pick up the selection style here as well. So that's reduced the amount of lines in my uh, view controller and then paste that in as well. And now all we need to do is just replace my new cell with self because obviously we're referencing ourselves now. So when this is in, what we're basically saying is when our new table cell class is initiated, we're going to override it with the subtitle uh, style we're going to set the text color to white, we're going to set the background color to that medium orange, and we're going to set the selection style to a UI table view cell selection style none. Okay, so as you've probably noticed, the background color is not, uh, the mad orange is no longer lighting up as it should be, and that will almost definitely report a bug when we actually go f when we actually try to start it up. And there it is. There's the error. Um, the reason for this is obviously because we haven't actually defined med orange in our uh, in in this class. So for ease of use, I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy med or the med orange line straight from view control .swift straight into my table view cell uh, .swift again in exactly the same place, just underneath the class declaration. 
and uh, that makes it all light up again. The other way that we could have actually tackled this is by initiating a new uh, a, a new instance of the view controller and then referencing it that way. Um, but that seems a little bit overkill for one variable. So for now, we're just going to leave it like that. So now when I give it a run, so all of our properties are uh, maintained the same, which is fantastic. So let's add some clicking ability at this point. I think, that's, I think that seems like a good way to take this forward. Uh, let's pop back to our view controller and in our table view data source delegate, or rather this is just now our table view delegate really. Let's go ahead and actually find the function uh, for when an item is tapped. So we're going to go command and we're going to click on UI table view. And I think the name of the function that we're looking for is did select row at index path. And there it is. So as always, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and go back and then paste into my table view delegate the uh, table view function did select row at the next path. So let's go ahead and create an instance of the cell that we've actually just tapped. And the way that we do that again is by going let my selected cell equal and then we're going to go UI table view cell. It's not implicit so we're going to you know give it some guidance here. Um, good practice to get into, like I said last time. Um, equals table view dot cell dot cell for row at index path, and let's just pass in the index path that the function gives us right here. Um, so that's actually going to give us our selected cell. So what we can do now is we can actually manipulate this cell to be or do whatever we want to do. And what we really want to do is we want to color it green and add that detail subtitle that we've just worked on. So first and foremost, let's actually do that subtitle. So we're going to go my selected cell dot detail text label dot text equals I finished my task. We're also going to change the color of that uh, detail text label. So let's just go my selected cell dot detail text label dot text color and let's set that to a UI color dot white color um, so that's set up our detailed text label for when it's tapped uh, which is exactly what and the only other thing we want to do now is actually set up our color our, our uh, cell to turn green when we tap it now I've already got the values for a green set up here so I'm just going to go ahead and create another UI color variable or rather UI color constant and we're going to go with red 0.251 uh, and that should uh, that's that should get us a nice green so let's go back down to my selected cell so my selected cell dot background color equals green now let's give that a run see how it looks uh, so we've got our, our cells in there feeding in as they should be we can we can add new awesome cells as we need to and then hit return and we get our, our new cell and then we've just finished the task we can add new awesome cells so we can tap that and it comes up with I finished my task but we're missing that little checkbox like we have we don't have a checkbox here and that was something that we initially wanted to do so let's go ahead and pop back into our ditalote row at index path function this time we're going to add an accessory which is going to be a check mark so the way that we do that is by going my selected cell dot accessory type equals UI table view cell accessory type dot and then we have the choice of check mark detail button disclosure indicator and detail disclosure button as requested we're going to want check mark and we can also color that by setting the tint of the cell so we can go my selected cell dot tint color and set that to that white color as well now I like keeping my colors in the same place, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and cut that and paste it underneath there. And let's keep everything nice and neat. I'm going to go ahead and comment this up and just say colors. Uh, so that should basically do everything that we need to. So now when I run it, we now have everything happens all at once. We get a little check mark, uh, glows green kind of thing and uh, get a little white check mark. So we finished our tasks, which is perfect. Uh, so it's looking pretty good at the moment. Our, our tasks are, are working pretty well. Okay, so let's set up our date. So first and foremost, what we're going to want to do is set up a 
date object. So this is going to be a let. So this is going to be a constant. It's going to be my date ns date equals ns date and then open brackets and we're just going to close the brackets immediately afterwards. I think that's the first time we've done that. Uh, then we're also uh, straight after that we're going to create a date formatter so that we can actually take the current date and format it so it looks nice. Uh, so we're going to go var my date formatter again ns date formatter equals ns date formatter and again open and close brackets. Then what we want to do is set our my date formatter. So we're going to go my date formatter dot date style, and then we're going to want to go ns date formatter style dot, and we've got a choice now. We can go medium, full, long, or no style kind of thing. Um, I like medium style, so I think I'm going to go with that. So the only other thing that we need to do now is actually create a string from this date formatter. Um, and put it into our text label. So the way that we can do that is just by deleting this I finish my task text and go my date formatter dot string from date and then plug in my date which is the first constant that we put in at the beginning. So let's keep all of that together, cross that out and then go set up detail subtitle date and then Keeps everything nice and neat, doesn't it? So now, if I run it, we should now get ourselves a little a little uh, a little address comes up, a little address, a little date at the bottom comes up, um, with the exact date of when all this happened. So I'm gonna make one final uh, I'm gonna make one final little tweak to this app. I'm just gonna change the color of the text at the top of the screen. Um, because I don't think it looks very nice. Uh, so let's go to our text field delegate, uh, sorry, our text field right down here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go self.textField.font. And then what I can do is I can actually create a font right here, which is exciting. So let's go UI font, Open, uh, open brackets, and then we can go name, string, st uh, size, and we can basically define everything here. So I'm a big fan of, I just did a, uh, <laughs> uh, just did a little at symbol there. Uh, we don't need those anymore. I'm a big fan of Ab Avenir Next, I'm gonna go with bold, and then I'm gonna make the text size a little bit bigger than usual. Um, I'm then gonna go ahead and set the text field it needs to be set to self.textField.text color, not tint color. So now when I run this, we now have some text. There we go. So it's all looking pretty neat now. It's, uh, it's looking nice. Um, so in the next part of this uh, tutorial, what we're going to be doing is having this so it uh, animates off the screen in a bit more of a fancier way. Um, and we can add a little bit more functionality to this, uh, such as uh, extra tabs, uh, for, uh, so we can see previously completed tasks and likes of that. But I believe this tutorial has kind of run on long enough, so I'm just going to put a pin in it right here. Um, but it's looking good, and if you've built this, you should be very proud of yourself so far. Um, so thanks again for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial, and uh, I'm looking forward to finishing this off in part three. Thanks again.